perched on a patch of moss in a nondescript wet meadow in Carroll County. North America's tiniest turtle basks peacefully in the sun, the very picture of a carefree existence. But looks can be deceiving. It's mid-May, and a team of volunteers led by Department of Natural Resources biologist Beth Schlimm sets up shop in the middle of this muddy clearing, a unique type of wetland that's home to an equally unique species, the diminutive bog turtle. Make sure you hug that shrub line because it was nice and wet last time we were here. If you find a turtle, call and I'll be there with a the bucket in a minute or two. We're here at one of our long-term monitoring bog turtle sites today to do an updated population survey. Traversing the wetland is no easy task. But the reward is well worth it. Quick, quick find. So this individual was on the surface, so we'll note that it was basking in the open and surrounded by low grass and dead vegetation. We flag the locations of all of our turtles, so at the end of the day, we can get them back to the exact location where they were found. Listed as threatened under the Endangered Species Act in 1997, these pint-sized reptiles have been monitored here in Maryland since the 70s, largely through surveys like this one. We typically do a walkthrough survey just to kind of see who we can find on the surface before we start digging around in the mud looking for turtles that haven't quite made it up to bask yet. That's how it begins. <laughs> this latter process, appropriately dubbed muddling. Bog turtles require these open canopied wetlands, so they need shallow water. They spend a lot of time burrowed down in the mud. But really the most important things are the wetland is wet throughout the year, and they really need an open canopy structure. Loss of wetland habitat for bog turtles is largely due to development and fragmentation within the landscape surrounding those wetlands. As development encroaches, the hydrology of the landscape changes. The muck dries up and the turtles disappear. But judging by the number of turtles in buckets today, this particular site remains suitably soggy. Two, three, four years old. So we're gonna go ahead and get the weight and some shell measurements. They also mark the shells of first time captures in order to keep track of who's who and who's new. So when we come back in you know, three or four years, we will hopefully be recapturing a lot of the same individuals. And so we get information on longevity. We catch new turtles hopefully every time, so we get an idea of reproduction rate for the site. The general trend across the range is that populations are declining. And stronghold sites like this one owe their health to active management. Several months later, the loud whine of weed whackers interrupts an otherwise tranquil July morning. Beth and her crew are visiting a wetland threatened not by highways or houses, but by plants. We're specifically focusing on the cattail in the wetland. It can grow dense enough that it creates shady conditions that just aren't conducive to the bog turtles that live here. Historically, there would have been natural disturbance that would have maintained the open canopy structure of these wetlands, and that would have been, you know, grazing from animals or beaver coming through. Those disturbances are not as common on the landscape anymore. So they're filling in for Mother Nature, cutting the cattails and applying herbicide directly to the stems. There's not a lot of overspray and really little to no collateral damage. Besides habitat loss, predation also takes a toll by hungry raccoons and foxes, and by people, poachers. The bog turtle is a highly prized species when it comes to the black market trade for turtles. And they aren't the only native species at risk. 
Many turtles around the eastern United States can be heavily poached. The more rare, the more beautiful, charismatic, the more wanted they are all over the world. These wood turtles were rescued from illegal captivity in New York and now reside at the Maryland Zoo in Baltimore. Kat Mansouras is the zoo's conservation programs manager. Wood turtles are a native turtle to the northern area of the United States, primarily found in mountainous forest areas with streams. There's genetic testing that can be done so that you can locate where a turtle is from. So the genetic testing was done, and it turns out these turtles were from Maryland. Due to health concerns, they can't be re-released. But here at the zoo, they have an important part to play in wood turtle conservation as the proud parents of a new generation. So since there were five female turtles, that presented an opportunity to do some breeding. And while the adults lounge atop their lunch, the hatchlings are in wilderness survival training. So we always make sure to feed the hatchling turtles live insects, live invertebrates, because that's what they're gonna encounter in the wild. They're also subject to regular weigh-ins. I'm taking their weights just to see how they're growing and how big they've gotten. We're aiming for them to be a little over 100 grams before they can be released. So once the turtles hit that milestone, they'll have a transmitter attached. And then we will release them basically into the wild. It's a conservation technique called head starting. In this case, a collaboration between the zoo, the Department of Natural Resources. I'm just giving him a little dunk. And the Susquehannock Wildlife Society, headed up by Scott McDaniel, who has been monitoring today's release site for years. We found that it really could use some help. The turtles are still here, but we're not seeing a lot of younger individuals. We're seeing a lot of older individuals. So this is not our solution to solving all the problems that we have with this population, but our hope is that it will buy us time. Today, the crew is releasing three turtles into the stream. It might not seem like much, but when it comes to turtle conservation, the mantra is simple. Every turtle matters. So every turtle that gets by a car, every turtle that gets poached, every turtle that gets eaten by a predator can make a huge impact. On the reverse side of that, every turtle we add back into the population that's already raised up to a healthy size that we know has a good chance at surviving into the future really does boost the potential for this population to persist into the future. The turtles get a quick dunk to acclimate to the local water source before being released on dry land. But thanks to the transmitters, it's not goodbye, it's see you later. The radio allows us to track them and be able to check on them frequently and, and monitor them through the years to see how they do. Meaning the work doesn't stop here. But for the wood turtle, as for their tiny mud-loving cousins, salvation from the many dangers of the modern world will require just that, work. These species have been on planet Earth for millions of years. And how sad would it be if the last several decades of human existence and development in these areas was enough to cause the extinction of the species. This is the conservation that we talk about, using the best research we have and implementing it and trying to give these animals a better shot.